go. Episode 17, Wasteland Weaponistics. This is a short episode as it covers the Smith & Wesson Model 2 Double Action 32 Break Action Revolver. With that mouthful of a name out of the way, I will be referring to this firearm with many different names throughout this presentation. This revolver has only appeared in Fallout 3. The Smith & Wesson Double Action 32 Break Action Revolver, unlike most firearms in Bethesda's Fallout games, we actually know the manufacturer of this gun. You see, whoever the modeler was for this simply modeled the logo of Smith & Wesson into the grip. Now, the S of the logo is a bit messed up, but it's pretty much the exact Smith & Wesson logo. Now, in-game, you will never see this, as the grip is completely hidden by the player's hand, and the texture quality is too low in-game to see it on a loose pistol on the ground. This is probably why Smith & Wesson never sued Bethesda for the use of their logo. So the Smith & Wesson 32 is a design that was popular from the late 1800s through pretty much the early 1900s with it running on into basically the 50s. Many copies were made by companies like Ivor Johnson, US Revolver Company, yes that was their name, and many others. Thousands of these little shiny Top Break 32 pistols were made and can often be found for sale today for as low as just $20. The one we have in game is a double or single action model, however it is never fired single action, always double action. These pistols were usually chambered for two versions of the 32 Smith & Wesson cartridge. There was a black powder version and a smokeless powder version. It can be kind of hard to tell which version of the revolver you might have, but for the Ivor Johnson versions of the revolver, it is whichever way the OWL logo on the grip is pointing. If the OWL is facing backwards, it's smokeless. If the OWL is facing forwards, it's black powder. Kind of an interesting way to do things. It kind of feels like a video game way to solve an issue. But this was done over 100 years ago. However, the grips do often fit both models of the gun, so you can have a smokeless version with black powder grips or vice versa. If someone felt the need to replace them at one point. Back to the Smith & Wesson model. These pistols were chambered in the 32 Smith & Wesson short round. A small straight walled revolver round, not exactly a hand cannon. They were also chambered in the 38 Smith & Wesson. This round is not the 38 special you might own or have heard about. 38 Smith & Wesson is quite a bit shorter and weaker. One thing to note about the 32 model is both a US president and an Italian king were both killed by 32 Smith & Wesson chambered revolvers. William McKinley, the 25th president, and Umberto I of Italy. Both assassins were punished very differently. For killing a US president, you get the electric chair, and for killing the king of Italy, you get life in prison. I think that's enough real world lore, let's move on to Fallout lore. <laughs> well, there's not really much to say about the Smith & Wesson 32 break. They are found all over the wasteland, from Megaton to Old Oni. Yet there is one place that this revolver can be found that is rather strange. There is a single 32 break action in the National Guard Depot bunker, with 5 rounds of ammunition. Why it might be here is anyone's guess. Mine would be that this was an officer's personal weapon and it was left in the depot the day the bombs dropped. Or, another possibility is that it belonged to a member of the Keller family, who sought to use the place as a vault. The 32 break can be seen being used by most human factions early on, like the raiders of the DC area and even Talon Company, if encountered at a low level. Why it's not in Fallout New Vegas, I have no idea. It fits perfectly into the Old West aesthetic of the game. Maybe Obsidian didn't feel like adding it because they had multiple other revolvers in the game and there was no real place for a small revolver like the 32 break. Josh Sawyer doesn't have any comments on it that I can find. The closest would be him talking about how Fallout 3 had a rifle and a pistol chambered in the same round and he didn't like that. Which is, But that's more about the hunting rifle changing calibers from Fallout 3 to New Vegas. I'm guessing for Bethesda, however, they never saw the need to add it to Fallout 4 or 76, as the role of weak pistol is now covered by pipe weapons. It is possible for Bethesda to add it to Fallout 76 with the future expedition system, as other Fallout 3 weapons have been found in the files, like the R91 and the Auto Axe.
So there are two unique versions of the 32 revolver. One is the concealed 32, which is acquired from Warner before entering the pit. It's exactly the same as the standard revolver, except you can get it past the pit raider guards. The other is Wild Bill's sidearm. This one is truly special. This revolver has two abilities. The first is that the fire rate of the revolver is pretty much turned off, allowing you to shoot it nearly as fast as you want. It also has a strangely high critical damage modifier, meaning that while most 32 pistols can be thrown away early on, the Wild Bill sidearm can be easily used well into the late game on all but the largest of enemies. Wild Bill's revolver is a reference to multiple real life historical characters. One is Wild Bill Hickok, who carried a multitude of different revolvers during his time in the Old West, including a 32 Rimfire Smith & Wesson Model No. 2. This revolver is different from the Model 2 we are talking about today, as it is a much older design. The other reference would be something I mentioned earlier in this video. You see, the man who killed William McKinley was Leon... Sorry, this is a Polish last name. See... Zygolg? It's C-Z-O-L-G-O-S-Z. -Z. Maybe it's a Czechols? Czechols? <laughs> Not exactly sure how you say his last name, so... Any Polish people or Eastern Europeans know how to pronounce C-Z-O-L-G-O-S-Z. -Z. This man, at the time at he, that he killed William McKinley, was working in a steel mill. Where do you find this revolver? In a steel mill. Two references with one gun. So that's all that can really be said about the Smith & Wesson 32 break action revolver. Much like in real life, it's a pistol that can be pretty much forgotten. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Wasteland Weaponistics. If you did, feel free to subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel, Trooper Fofo. Happy Thanksgiving.